I'm Leah Lawrence. And I'm her husband, Mitch Lawrence. And you are listening to the Southern Spirits Podcast, where I regale my husband with Southern stories of the macabre, creepy, and strange. And I drink. So what are you drinking tonight, Mitchell? Our beer tonight is not a beer. It's another seltzer. It's Narwater Key Lime Cherry, brewed and canned by Monday Night Brewing in Atlanta, Georgia, 4.7% alcohol by volume. Let's read the online description. Narwater Craft Heart Seltzer is brewed, not blended. Made with real fruit so you know it's good. This gluten-free, low ABV crusher is chock full of sweet cherries and tart limes. End quote. And I think the beginning of that quote is the same for all of them. Uh, They just add on the end with the actual flavor of it, you know. And uh, what I have to say is that there's really not any flavor at all. Like, there's a little bit of sour from the quote-unquote lime flavor. It's not bad, but it's also not particularly good. Uh, Definitely the worst of the four options we've had. Uh, The fourth one will be coming up shortly. And um, it just tastes like you'd expect, so there's really not much to even talk about. It just tastes like someone accidentally dropped their warhead into a big jug of sparkling water. That's what it tastes like. It's a little bit of citric acid, Mm -hmm. and that's it. Yeah. I gave it a 6.5 out of 10. Uh, It just doesn't do anything for me. I'm going to drink all three of them because there's only three, and, you know. I mean, they're they're not offensive, but they're they're not. They're going to be in the way if I don't drink. They're not good. Correct. I agree with you, Leah. Our our shot in the dark for the night, though, completely makes up for it. Uncle Nearest 1884 Small Batch Whiskey. Distilled and aged. I'm sorry. (laughs) I couldn't see for a second. Distilled and aged in Tennessee. Bottled by Uncle Nearest in Columbia, Tennessee. 46.5% alcohol by volume. Let's read the bottle. Uncle Nearest 1884 is the proud legacy of the best whiskey maker the world never knew, Tennessee distilling legend Nearest Green. Each of our small batch premium whiskeys are individually selected by our founders and descendants of Nearest Green, bottled at a similar proof to what made Nearest's whiskey so beloved. End quote. Uh, yeah, just like the 1856 one, uh, real fucking good. I love this whiskey. This is probably better than the 1856 for me. It's sweeter. Um, it's kind of smoky and caramel flavory by itself. It's amazing. I really do think this is probably the better of the two, but it's the less expensive of the two. So either way, uh, damn good. I recommend trying it if you're into whiskey, period. It is real strong, though. So be aware of that. 10 out of 10 on ice. 10 out of 10 in a whiskey sour. Uh, It's just real good, but I actually prefer this by itself if you're going to get down to the nitty gritty. So 10 out of 10 overall. Leah, how'd you feel about it? I really enjoyed this whiskey sour. Mm -hmm. Um, The last one that we had from Uncle Nearest was really good, but it was uh, probably more complex than I want it to be in a whiskey sour. This one is just that mellow. It's mellow enough to mix it, and I haven't tried it by itself yet, but I'm sure it's, you know, lovely Mm -hmm. if you're you're down with drinking it straight like that. <laughs> you can um, sip it. You can sip this on ice one yeah, if you want to. Yeah, I don't want to. Um, <laughs> I've, you know me. I'm more yeah. of a whiskey sour kind of girl. Um, this one mixes perfectly in a whiskey sour. It's just, yeah. it's it's smooth and it's sweet, but it's not so sweet that, you know, Jack Daniels, that level, you know what I mean? It's, yes. it's a more sophisticated Tennessee whiskey, and I really like it. Um, and if you hadn't heard uh, the last episode that we did Uncle Nearest on, which was that last week? Uh, no, it was a couple weeks a couple ago. A couple weeks ago? Okay. Yeah. Um, if you haven't um, heard of that, uh, this is a black-owned business. It was uh, opened um, and run completely by, by a black woman, and I just think that's really important mm. to support businesses like that, especially in... You know, distilling, it's not a huge, uh, you know, th- there aren't a lot of black entrepreneurs in that particular field. Yeah. And this is an excellent product, and um, I, they've won so many awards with this stuff. I really think that, you know, it's important to support, uh, you know, black women in that industry when you can. And this is a fantastic fucking product, so there, it's yeah. a win-win on every level. So, you know, uh, just putting it out there, go get you some. It's distributed almost all over the place in the United States. And I think I'd, so, yeah. I don't know if they do exports or anything like that for our listeners overseas, but, you know, if you're in the United States for the most part, uh, you can probably find it. So get you a bottle. Yeah, please do, because like Leo was saying, uh, I'm not just blowing smoke up your ass here. No, nah, it's really good. This is amazing whiskey. Uh, I really do think that it's the better of the two that I've tried, and I think they're, they offer three, maybe four. 
um, that they make, but we just had two in our local liquor store. And this, the less expensive one for me, I think is better. And I even gave the last one a 10 out of 10 because it's amazing too. Yeah. So They're I both recommend good. them. Yeah. It just it depends harsh, on what your, it, it really just depends on what your um, preference is as yeah. far as whiskeys go. Try them both and pick the one that you like. I do happen to like this one better, but once again, mm-hmm. I'm a cheap bitch and this is very mellow that and smooth. Are. So uh, it just <laughs> depends on what you feel like, but this one is excellent as well. Yeah. So y'all go find uh, Uncle Nearest. And uh, that is it for the alcohols, Leah. Huzzah. So uh, what do we want to do now? I guess we'll go directly into our sassy southern saying of the evening. Excellent. I love them. Well, this week, (laughs) the phrase that you need to be working into your general conversation this week uh, is going to be walking on a slant. Okay. Uh, Would you like to hear it in a sentence? mm, Yes, that would help. Ooh, honey, have you seen Joe last night at the bar? He sure uh, was walking on a slant. Okay, I've had this happen to me. <laughs> um, now, I don't normally get so drunk to where I don't have good balance or anything like that. And, uh, you know, slur. I don't slur too often. I can, but um, yeah, yeah, I have done it, but I'm not one of those people. We all know those people who are just like the super lightweight. Yeah. Or yeah, they drink a lot, but... You know they're drunk because they can't fucking stand up. So, you know, those people. Walking um, on a slant means drunk. Just putting yes. that out there. You never, you you pussyfooted around it, but you didn't actually call it what it was. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, the phrase walking on a slant is just a polite way of saying you drunk as shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's it. Well, <laughs> like I said, I've I've rarely gotten there because usually I just get tired and I'm like, I'm going to go to bed, you know, yeah, when I I've, get drunk enough. My body so. has its own, like, cut cut it off kind of situation. My yeah. lips start going numb, and I'm like, mm-mm, got to back off, or, you know, I'm mm-hmm. going to be in the floor. So, I stop. <laughs> I've only blacked out two or three times in my life. I've never not remembered something yeah. because I've gotten that drunk. Once was on, uh, this is a fun story I like to tell, there's, there's the cheapest liquor in the world you can find, and it's not even... Like a type of liquor, <laughs> it is just like here's liquor, and if you've ever been in a bad way and you needed something to drink, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's called Heaven Hill. It is the grossest fucking thing in the world, but it mixes so good with Dr Pepper. Ew. I drank. Uh, let me think. What what did I do? I I was bowling at the time with my friend Gordon that you know, Leah, the same one who sent the Chipper Jones tweet. Everyone, so. I made a drink of that and went to the bowling alley for our league game. And when I say a drink, like I had, you know, a, a, a thermos, I guess. And <laughs> I made a, a Dr. Pepper at Heaven Hill, took it with me, got home that night and don't remember the rest of the night. That's what happened. So um, I, I remember that. And uh, my dude trip last year, I drank like 20... <laughs> 20 uh, seltzers and uh, definitely forgot a lot of that night too. A friend of mine and I were just talking about that earlier today. But those are like the two times in my life that I've ever blacked out. So, Did you know that Heaven Hill Distillery actually makes very expensive uh, uh, bourbon as well? It's a bourbon I, blend. They make a cheap bourbon blend, but they also make like Elijah Craig. and. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. They That's all, Heaven Hill? Because we've yeah. had Elijah Craig on the show. Yeah. All of that stuff is also from the Heaven Hill Distillery. It's oh, God. just a different... Um, well, look, the actual product, Heaven Hill, of <laughs> blended liquor is so fucking gross it is a bourbon it's a blended bourbon i mean if you say so (laughs) they also make vodkas and stuff like that but um that distillery actually owns lots of very expensive brands as well uh a handle of that stuff is like ten dollars that's what i'm talking about and i got that and i was like i need to drink to bowl (laughs) because bowling for me there are three things that i can do where i slowly get better the more that i drink and then i hit like a certain part of drinking and just plateau just straight down that's bowling darts and golf i get so good at them and then i'm just all of a sudden real fucking bad (laughs) but you know just saying it it works it happens Um, they're also the people behind aristocrat if that helps are they really? I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Oh man, Aristocrat got me through some times yeah, all in college. Of the, they pretty much make all of the very cheap, like 
low level stuff. Then they make yeah. some very expensive stuff, but like I'm having trouble uh, <laughs> believing that. I'm having a lot of trouble believing no, that. No, it's it's all under there. They make uh, some of the cheapest gin you can buy. They make oh that hypnotic that that uh, hypnotic, blue stuff huh? that hypnotic. I don't know how you say it, but <laughs> they make that. Yeah, they make a bunch really? of shit. It's crazy. Oh, and two fingers tequila. Oh, I do know two fingers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that stuff's good. Yeah, so like I said, it's a blend of of uh, really good stuff and well, absolute paint thinner. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Uh, well, <laughs> anyway, y'all, that is our drinking history. I, I Whatever, guess. walking on a slant. But anyway, I blacked out drinking that shit, and uh, I was if I would have walked somewhere, I would have been walking on a slant, I believe. So, so. If you see anybody out walking on a slant and you need to be polite but still talk about them behind their back, that's a phrase you can use. I mean, if you really want to, yeah. <laughs> Why not? Oh, anyway, <laughs> so uh, are you ready for a very first story of the evening? I sure am. Leah, hit me with it. All right. Well, we're going to your hometown of Montgomery, Alabama. Really? Yes. That's and we exciting. are going to be talking about some special kind of creepy letters that got sent and a murder that happened because of it. Some creepy letters? Some creepy letters. That's exciting. So this happened way back in April of 1891. Okay. Um. So there was a woman there. Her name was Mrs. Sophia B. Dunham. And mm-hmm. she was, uh, you know, upper middle class uh, lady in Montgomery, Alabama. Okay. And one day in April of 1891, she received a mysterious letter from oh, someone God. she did not know. Oh, God. And uh, this is what the letter said. Are okay. you ready? Yes. <laughs> it says, Dear Madame, <laughs> I guess it is quite a surprise and something very unusual for you to receive a note of this character from a stranger. But, my dear woman... But... It is very much to your interest for me to write it. Oh, here we Not go. Not that the matter in the least interests me, but that I feel it is my duty as a man not to conceal from you a thing which will cause you no little trouble if not corrected at once. My goodness. Now, if you will meet me on Katoma Creek Road Sunday afternoon at four o'clock. I know that road. You do? Yeah. Good. I shall inform you of something that by your not hearing and acting according will cause you an abundance of trouble. Oh, oh woman, don't oh. fail to meet me. Oh, woman. For the, re- <laughs> for the result would certainly be disastrous. Mm-hmm. And you may be assured, I shall not say anything that would be improper for any man to say to one of your sex. Now, do not fail to come, for by doing so you shall reap benefit. I am not one whom you have never seen, but one to whom, perhaps, you have never paid the slightest attention. Oh, goodness. I am yours truly. Light tan leggings with black brass buttons on a black <laughs> horse of good gait around the park Sunday. That was his, that was his name? <laughs> that, or that's that, he was that's how he signed it, so he'd know who to look for. Brass brown leggings? Uh, no, tan leggings tan with leggings. brass buttons brass on a black buttons. horse of good gait. Around the park. Uh, how do you know how you, that is some gate hubris? <laughs> I mean, come on, dude. You know, oh. Nobody likes how they walk. <laughs> Fuck off. The horse walks great. Oh, it's the it's, it's the horse. The horse a that black has... horse of good gait. Oh, uh, okay. So like high stepping. A yeah, bit? he's on a fancy horse that does That's the little yeah. the little flicks the out little like hat. Dobby does. Our dog little... sometimes high steps like a yeah, horse. Yeah, he does. It's cute. But he's a little, sweet little man. <laughs> he is a sweet little man. Uh, <laughs> but that is not what we're talking about. Um, <sighs> so she got this letter and she's like. The all fucking dacity, sir. The Excuse me. Fucking dacity. Um, so I'm not sure if he's attempting to say that like her husband's cheating on him on her, or that mm-hmm. she's cheating on him, or that they want like that letter did not make a ton of sense to me. But he's just like, hey, I got some information, and you better come listen to it, girl. Oh, goodness. Yeah, and so she is immediately taken aback. She's a little upset about it, and she goes straight to her husband, whose name was Colonel Bradford Dunham. Oh. And she says, Colonel. He's a colonel. Excuse me, and waves it at him and says, (laughs) read this fucking letter. And he does. Um, Shot in the dark. Oh, here we go. Where does Mr. Dunham work? Did he work A, at the bank, B, the post office, or C, the railroad company? He was a colonel. 
Yeah, but he was previously a colonel. It's after the war. He is now just a regular dude doing regular dude stuff at the bank, post office, or railroad company. You can uh, choose. Okay. I'm going to say um, the fucking post office. You're incorrect, sir. Okay. He works for the railroad company. Uh, that's what I was going to say. Like, if he was a colonel, he's got to get into something. I don't know. Colonelly? I, yeah, I figured <laughs> you could be the head of a railroad company. And he was. He was the general yeah. manager of the Alabama Midland Railroad Company. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh. That explains why they're so hoity-toity. Yeah, they are They are definitely upper middle class fancy. I mean, they're not so fancy that they don't have to work. But, you know, he's got a good job. How was that shot? Very flavorful, but goddamn. <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah. That'll do it. So, in oh, all I of washed the... it down with the key lime cherry. Are oh, you okay? Oh, that's bad. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> Don't mix those. So, they never really uh, said anything to the papers or anything about what the letter was even talking about. Oh. Um, nobody ever really comes out and says, hey, XYZ has been happening and that's what that letter was about. Oh. Um, but anyway, the colonel gets the letter from his wife and reads it. And he takes this immediately as an absolute insult on his wife's honor. Yeah, And he's pissed off about it. And he's like, fuck all this bullshit. We're going to find out who wrote this and make sure that they pay for this slight against my wife's yeah. honor. Yeah. So I mean, I'm all about this. He pays an undercover dude to go out at the park and look for Mr. Tan Britches with the brass buttons and a sprightly gated horse, you yeah. know, um, his and his horse with gate hubris. Yeah. So what he does is he has them write a letter back, uh, signed from Miss Dunham, saying, "Oh yes, Mister Tan Brass Buttons, <laughs> I'll see you in the park on Sunday." And of course, she doesn't show up because she's a fucking lady of honor. And yeah. uh, unfortunately, though, he, for him, he he does in fact show up. So Mister Dunham had his people oh, no. stationed in the park looking for the sprightly gated horse. Um, and uh, they find him and it turns out uh, Mrs. Dunham wasn't there he showed up his name was James Cunningham he was 19 years old oh, no. and he was an employee of the Alabama Midland Railroad Company now how did he afford a horse with a great gate like that <laughs> if he was just a railroad employee like maybe his daddy bought it for him I don't know Yeah. I don't know his life well um, but Mr. 19-year-old uh, James Cunningham uh, was immediately fired from the railroad company. Well, that makes um, sense. Yeah. So Colonel Dunham basically said, look, you are being super creepy towards my wife. <laughs> you can't keep being creepy towards my wife. Uh, and you've been saying, like, not cool things about my wife. Uh, you're fired uh, and I'm the boss and I can do that. Yeah. So uh, he thinks that that's the end of it. They think that they're not going to have any more problem from this guy because he's been fired. He's been dealt with. They've moved on. Yeah. But about five months later, Colonel Dunham uh, hears through the grapevine that Mr. Cunningham has been showing the letter, that decoy letter that they had written him to get him to show up in the park um, that was signed by Mrs. Dunham. He'd been flinging it around town saying, oh, me and Mrs. Dunham have been fucking. Yeah. You know, like, we've been hooking up and... Yeah. See this letter? Look at this letter. This is proof. This is her stationery. Sniff it. It's probably got her perfume on it. Oh, like, I've been around town with Mrs. Dunham. <laughs> and oh. the colonel hears this and he is abso fucking lutely livid. Yeah. He knows that this is not okay. He knows and it he, doesn't smell like his wife. Yeah, yeah. He's like, no, yeah. no. No, no, that one's mine. Stop sniffing my wife's <laughs> essence. God damn it. I, I, he's just not going to stand for it. Yep. So the colonel decides uh, at that very moment that he's going to get himself a shotgun and he is going to shoot Mr. Cunningham as soon as he sees his scrawny little 19-year-old face. I like it. Um, yeah. And so, get unfortunately after. for Mr. Cunningham... Uh, Mr. Uh, Dunham had been sitting in the doorway of a drugstore. I don't know why. I don't know when. What was he doing? I don't know. Maybe he's waiting on his wife, just had his gun, just hanging out, waiting on her because ladies be shopping. I don't know. Yeah, bitches be shopping, Leah. (laughs) 
But as James Cunningham walks by, he realizes, hey, that's the little bitch has been talking about my wife. So he <laughs> picks up his shotgun, which has been loaded with buckshot, and he doesn't say a word to him. He just looks at him, and I think they kind of get that like little you kind of like yeah, yeah look in their eyes, you and he just rat. um. Yeah, like he unloads both barrels of his shotgun directly, oh. point blank, into the guy's chest. Good God. Yeah. So he drops dead, obviously, and Cunningham, you know, dies instantly. And Colonel Dunham was like, ah, got that taken care of. He sets his <laughs> rifle down and he walks his shotgun. happy ass, his shotgun, excuse yeah. me. He, he sits his gun down. He walks his happy ass to the police station and he calmly tells them, hey, I just murdered a man. You should hey. probably arrest me. Did he say murdered? No, he just said I've shot. I defended my wife's honor. Yeah. Is what he said. Oh, he just right. like, hey, I've I've shot uh, this young man. You should probably arrest me. And they say, oh, yeah, you're right. We're gonna we arrest should. you. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. definitely. Yes. Uh, so this, of course, causes a bit of a flap in Montgomery, like yeah. you'd like you'd think, as it should. Um, and there was some media attention over it, but the sentiment in the city itself was pretty divided because some people. Uh, you know, we're friends with the kid that got killed, and some of the people really were like, he should not have been slandering this woman's honor, you know. So there was a coroner's inquest, and the jury ended up saying that it was first-degree murder, Um, but a lot of the people thought that, you know, the colonel's action was super justified because that was a super-duper slight against his wife's honor and reputation, and that, you know... What else were you supposed to do? not just a slight. It was a super duper slight. Super duper slight. Yeah, Um, And so they had a grand jury hearing. And uh, eventually, one of the people that is called forward to testify um, was an associate of Mr. Cunningham, the guy that got killed. Um, And he said, and he testified in court, that Mr. Cunningham had told him that he had, after he had been fired from the railroad um, for, quote, undue injury intimacy with mrs dunham oh mm-hmm. it was that undue huh? undue intimacy um <clears throat> my goodness basically rotten her letters but um after he was fired for that he decided that he was going to kill colonel dunham as soon as he, next time he saw him yeah. um, and he did in fact have you know a firearm on his person as well so that sort of put it in this weird Maybe it was self-defense, but it probably wasn't situation. Maybe it was summer, (laughs) summer night. What? (laughs) Maybe it was self-defense. Maybe I murdered him. I'm not sure. That was me singing. I'm a little, a little bit drunk. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> Are you okay? Because nope. I, I, like, I got the song you were going for, but it was not on key or no, Leah. It relevant. was in key. I'm always in key. <laughs> Please. I mean, it was a key. Please. It wasn't the key. <laughs> there were keys involved. <laughs> keys were around. I mean, yeah, um, yeah. But anyway, so uh. it sort of that particular testimony put in enough reasonable doubt that basically the grand jury failed to indict him. Um, And so Colonel Bradford just, you know, got released and got off completely scot-free for, you know, unloading a shotgun into a 19-year-old's chest. That's weird. Um, Yeah. And so the colonel was completely released from jail, didn't have any charges whatsoever, and he resumed his position as the general manager of the railroad from there on out. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. White white guy, by the way. White. Oh, yeah. Everybody in this particular situation was white. Yep. Um, Makes sense. Yeah. So, uh, and you can still find the original scans of that particular, or those newspapers, uh, the Montgomery Ugh. Advertiser, oh, and still has pages of that scanned uh, into the the internet. So you can actually into see the internet. The, yeah, into the internet. My goodness, you can actually see the original uh, firsthand reporting of that case, which yeah. I think is kind of interesting. Um, but yeah. The guy just walked away and scot free yeah. after turning himself in for the murder of a teenager. Well, Alabama man, <laughs> you know what do you expect, Leah? Look, I agree that the kid shouldn't have been smack talking his wife, but like, dude, yeah, you got to do something about that. That's that's too much. Like, <clears throat> you think I could get away with that now? No, no, I don't. You think if somebody smack talk you and I'm like, hey, don't worry. 
I've got a double barrel shotgun, <laughs> and I will defend your honor. But by the way, you you do have some stinky letters that go out. So. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm just writing the most trollopy letters. I didn't say they were trollopy. I said they've got your stench. <laughs> Essence (laughs) Olea. That is disgusting. Um, Well, I'm not the one that writes the letters. I'm sorry. The only letters I've sent in the past five years have all been either wedding invitations or uh, letters to our patrons. So (laughs) sorry, guys, if there was some stank on it. Yeah, they all smelled a little funky. (laughs) (laughs) Hashtag Leah Funk. Gross. Let's, Let's not. I mean, I would love to not, Leah. You're the one who <laughs> sent out the stinky letters. Uh, anyway, so yeah, um, that that was the murder that was caused by a creepy anonymous letter. Yeah, that's that's fucked up, you know. Mm-hmm. That's real fucked up. I agree. But, uh, I mean, what are you going to do? You know, what are you going to do? Uh, it's your hometown, man. I you don't can't know. can't help it. It is my hometown, but uh, my hometown's I mean, I don't... only got the one good story. See, have you ever heard me stand up for my hometown? No, <laughs> no. no, it's shit. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. There's nothing in Montgomery to be proud of. There's plenty to be proud of. There's a whole lot to be upset about as well. <laughs> it's a mixed bag. Yeah, it's definitely a mixed bag. But there's a there's like a couple of things to be proud of in Montgomery. <laughs> It's a mixed bag, but like, it's like you all still, the chocolate chips fell to the bottom, you, you have know, a very like limited selection. The good stuff is is very hard to come by. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's anyway, it. that's Montgomery for you. Yeah. All right. Well, um, enough about that. Are you ready to go to our second story? Of yes, the ma'am. Evening? Hit it's me with it. It's a little bit more bizarre. Um, Ooh, a little like interesting. Bizarre. A little. Um, I don't know, extraterrestrial. Oh, mm-hmm. no, it's aliens. Mm-hmm. Aliens, yes. Um, okay. So we're going to Austell, Georgia, and we're going to be talking about, well, I don't even want to give you the name of it because it'll you. give it away. Thank you. Um, but Austell, Georgia is sort of uh, west of Atlanta. It's I would consider it still a suburb of Atlanta. Uh, it's okay. a little bit further out, but it is still in the Atlanta metro area. And it's on the, like I said, the west side of Atlanta, if you're looking at a map. Um, and so it's kind of a rural area. And we're talking about 1953. So it was w- way before Atlanta became as big as it is now mm. so it would not have been considered a suburb of atlanta at that yeah. point it the the urban sprawl had not gotten that far out yet Correct. Um, so this is a pretty rural time in night uh, r- bleh, let me try that again <laughs> a rural place in 1953 um so it was july the 8th um pretty late at night uh, in 1953 and there was a police officer and his partner uh the officer's name was shirley brown Okay. Shirley spelled S H E R L E Y. Never heard a man named that before, but I like it. Excuse uh, me. Okay. I Ugh. knew a man named Shelley, but because his real name was Sheldon. No, like this one's just Shirley. I, I don't know. I've never seen it spelled that way, and I've never heard a man named that, but I like it. It's fun. Yeah. Um, anyway, but uh, Officer Brown uh, and his partner were doing a patrol down the rural Bankhead Highway uh, that was running through Austell, Georgia, mm. and they see this pickup truck just stop dead in the middle of the road. And it's late at night, and it's rural, and there aren't any street lights. And they're like, "Well, I be damned, they what's going on? Why are they stopped I'll be in the middle? Well, I be shit. Uh, <laughs> why are well. they in the middle of the road? And so they stop and they pull over and they see if these people uh, in this pickup truck need help or if their car stalled out, seeing what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, and they pull over, and what they find is kind of fucking weird. So it was a pickup truck that had three dudes in it. Three-dude uh, truck? Three-dude truck. Goodness. There was a man named Ed Waters. Uh, he was a barber. He was 28 years old. Uh, there was another man named Tom Wilson. He was also a barber. He was 20 years old. And then there was a man named Arnold Buddy Payne, uh, and he was a butcher, and he was 19 years old. Well, goodness. Yeah. Uh, two barbers and a butcher. Um, and they were all standing by the side of the road, kind of freaking out. Um, and just like in a general hubbub, uncomfortable excitement, weird kind of vibes coming from them, you know? Okay. Uh, and 
there was something really fucking weird laying on the street in front of the truck. And the truck's headlights were just sort of barely illuminating a little body uh, on the road. And the body... This is creepy. ...looked like an alien. What was it doing there? Just laying there. It was dead. Uh, (laughs) So it was, quote, a bizarre... (laughs) <laughs> two foot tall creature <laughs> and it looked for all the world like a space alien <laughs> it was just laying there it was dead it yeah. did not yeah. have a distinctive gait no no it, distinctive gait it, it was just like lifeless and sitting there hmm. um so in this time in this area there had been a lot of ufo sightings um mm-hmm. specifically in marietta which is a little bit further north um even the day before in marietta they had had sightings and lots of multiple reports of seeing multicolored quote cone-shaped objects flying uh in the skies above marietta um and there had just been a lot of i mean it was the 50s sort of the spacey kind of art and architecture was going on at the time and it it was just a big deal uh and like i said a lot more reports of that kind of thing were going on yeah Uh, and so it, it was it was something that was in the public consciousness at the time um but no one had ever actually gotten a a space alien no one had ever like they hadn't gotten one. They hadn't, they hadn't found a body. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and That's unfortunately, it. these guys ran right the fuck into one. Um, so they told the police officers this story. So they said they had been out in their truck. They were, quote, honky tonking around, uh, which means they were probably drinking and probably driving too fast. Yeah. Uh, they was honky tonking. They were honky tonking. Yeah. And they came over this hill going a little too fast and they found. Th- so they come over this hill <laughs> and they see this like flying saucer uh, just sort of parked in the middle of the road and they put on their brakes as hard as they can but the truck ends up sliding um, did the saucer have on its hazard lights <laughs> well we'll get there oh, uh, so oh, hello. it it starts skidding the truck and the men say that the ufo was glowing all over in a certain color mm-hmm. so shot in the dark Jesus. i'm gonna get fucked up if i miss this <laughs> what color was the ufo glowing was it glowing A, oh, red, B, gold, or C, green? Red, gold, or green? Mm-hmm. I'm going to say because it's traditionally alien. I'm going to go with green. You're incorrect. God. It's red. Hazard lights, man. It was the hazard lights. Yeah. Huh? I want you to know that I'm severely upset with you at this point. <laughs> it was, quote, glowing red all over. No. And they said that as they were... Slamming on the brakes of this truck, uh, they saw three little figures that were sort of outside of this UFO. What were they doing? Uh, they're just sort of wandering up and down the highway, just sort of on a traipsing, you know? I don't know exactly what they were doing. But they, they were, were just, traipsing, though? They were traipsing. Yeah. Uh, and they said they slammed on their brakes, oh, and they just, shot. like, they couldn't avoid them in in the road so the two uh two of the uh figures sort of jump out of the way and they make it into the ufo and they you know lift off and leave uh but the third one unfortunately gets hit by the truck oh god um and this story is kind of corroborated because there were circular scorch marks on the road. There was a big, long uh, tire screech marks, you know, all the way going down this hill where they, long had, screech marks. Where they had tried to stop their truck. Yep. And, of course, there was this little body sitting in the road. And uh, here's a quote from one of the dudes, uh, Ed Waters, uh, from a newspaper that was printed near then. It said, quote, they all jumped for it. Two of them made it. I hit the other one. The red object turned blue and just sailed away at a very fast (laughs) speed. Okay. Um, So, obviously, the officers are very skeptical of this story because it involved literal fucking space aliens. Yeah. But well, arguably, yes, uh, yeah. but they saw the physical evidence. They took the pictures. I mean, oh. there were long skid marks. There was 
the body. And there were, you know, these scorch marks uh, on the road itself that looked very odd. Yeah. So they talked, am- talked, <laughs> talked, they talked. amongst themselves oh, they and they talked, were like, all right. What are we supposed to do? I mean, we've got the anyway. So they they make a report and they don't really know exactly what to do. Uh, but they let the guys go and they let them go with the space alien body. They let them keep they it. They just let them keep they it. They let them keep it. They just let them keep it. Oh, y'all make America great again. <laughs> Why can't I keep the fucking alien I find? <laughs> the one that you murdered with there's your too, car. There's too much goddamn red tape now. <laughs> Everything's all bureaucratic and shit. All Let these, me keep the fucking alien up. All on. these men in black just yeah. trying to take our fucking this aliens. This is bullshit. It's government overreach. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. If I hit now. it with my car, I should be able to field dress this it, goddamn it. bullshit. <laughs> goddamn right. Hang that fucker up and bleed it dry so that you can get the meat out of it. You're right. S- hang it up. Slit its throat. Let all the alien blood drip out. It might be radioactive, but who gives a fuck? You're going to fillet it anyway. Oh, man, I'm so into this, Leah. Let's make some alien chili. <laughs> oh, gross. Um, <laughs> oh, I hate it. Anyway, <laughs> but yeah, so they let the guys go with the body. And uh, the three guys go home. They put their alien in their refrigerator. I'm so drunk now. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> and they called up the Atlanta Constitution, which is a newspaper mm-hmm. in Atlanta, of course. Of course. Um, yeah. Oh, who'd have thunk otherwise? Yeah. And the reporter said, okay, fine. I get that like aliens are a thing right now, but I'm going to need a little bit more proof about this bullshit before we print it. And so they say, no problem. The police let us keep the fucking alien. It's on our refrigerator right now. Oh, God. Would you like to see it? They kept it intact in the refrigerator yeah. or they butchered it like no. I was talking about? No, no, no. They left it all in one piece in the refrigerator because it's two feet tall. I guess they just sort of oh, put it in baby. at an angle. I yeah, it's, it's a little a thing, alien. two foot tall. Um, and so they brought it to the newspaper and the newspaper had a local veterinarian examine it. Now, y'all. A veterinarian. A veterinarian. Okay. <laughs> Y'all, veterinarians uh, in this area, in most areas, especially in, in that time period and in that location, you're looking after horses, you're looking after cows, yeah. you're looking after dogs, you're looking after cats, maybe pigs. That's about it. There's not a whole range of exotic things that they're looking for. There might be. So just bear that in mind later down the the road. But the local veterinarian who examined it said it, quote, looked like something out of this world. (laughs) So that was good enough for the fucking Atlanta Constitution to say, well, by golly, Jim Bob, Uh, we've got ourselves a goddamn alien. Yeah. So. Couldn't be this podunk vet. uh, No. In quotes, vet. Has never yeah. seen an actual anyway. Yeah, like uh, most of the time they're 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 cows and horses, y'all. Um, no, Ugh. but they saw this alien and said, "Yeah, it looks like an alien to me, Jim Bob." And so <laughs> <laughs> they printed the story, and the story goes out, um, and it is, you know, picked up by literally everybody. Yep. It creates a massive nationwide media flap. People all over Ugh. have heard about this bullshit reporters and and people in the media absolutely flood this town which is pretty small um and news offices from around the country police stations just everybody's showing up even the fucking air force shows up to see what the hell is going on because as we know you know now in retrospect they had project blue book going on that was investigating any kind of abnormal aerial phenomenon of course. We and so if they, uh, well, we've talked about it on the show many times before, yeah, so if you don't know about know. it. That's why I said we all know about uh-huh. it. Uh-huh. Okay. Sure. Yeah, um, but anyway, they, you know, came in to investigate anything that was abnormal and UFO related. So they, they sent some folks down. Um, and at this point, the state police sort of gets involved. Um, and the head of the crime lab there in Georgia, his name is Dr. Herman Jones, shows up and confiscates the body of the alien. Because, Uh-oh. of course, like, well, that's sort it's of where you, That's what I was talking about. what you should start with. Fucking bullshit. Um, 
So he confiscates the body and he takes it to Emory University, which is there. I think it's in Atlanta, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And so they Mm -hmm. take it and they get it examined by two doctors of anatomy. Um, Hmm. It was Dr. Marlon Hines and Dr. Uh, W.A. Mickle, which is a great name. Yeah, that's a nice name. Mickle. Um, So they quickly figure out that... um, it's probably it's probably not an alien, um, and they in it could fact be, though. they in fact it identify be. it. And the quote that Doctor Hines uh, is quoted me. in the paper as saying is, "quote If the creature came from Mars, they have monkeys on Mars." <laughs> and Doctor Mickle added, "quote If it's from outer space, Wait. they haven't invented anything new." Leah, I have another song for you. <laughs> what? Are you ready? Yeah. Are there monkeys on Mars? <laughs> Thanks for that. Um, Leah loves David Bowie. <coughs> it's true. It's everybody does, though. Um, I mean, everybody loves Bowie. <laughs> Fuck off. Um, anyway, so the professors identify it as a capuchin monkey, a capuchin, 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 capuchin. capuchin. Yeah, you have to get real southern to say capuchin. that. Capuchin. If you try to be you know, proper saying that, you're not going to sound right. Capuchin. No, it's capuchin. It's a capuchin. It's a capuchin monkey. <laughs> it was a capuchin monkey uh, that was made to look like an alien. They cut its tail off and they removed its fur with a depilatory crane. Jesus, y'all. They nared a monkey. Hey, <laughs> that monkey's hair was never going to grow back right anyway. <laughs> I can promise you because it is evidence on my fucking scalp. They nared a monkey. Yeah. Um. So... Like I said, it it was it was a monkey. Um, Did they and have Nair when, in the fifties? Huh? Was there Nair in the nineteen fifties? I don't know when Nair the brand name came out, but, but depilatory creams like Nair. Uh, Did you say depilatory? Depilatory. Okay, never heard that before. It's just anything that well, it's a hair removal vol cream depilatory. Right. Yeah. I understand that that yeah. much, but. <laughs> That's what Just they're saying. called. But anyway, uh, they neared a monkey. Um, and so mm. when the, you know, determination of the fact that it was a capuchin, ca- cap, fuck, it was a monkey. When they came out and done said it was a monkey, <laughs> the guys were like, oh, our bad. Joke's oh. on us. Uh, yeah. we, Sorry, guys. Ha ha. It was just a hoax. We still found it. We still found it in the road. It wasn't us. Mm, See, and that's where things get a little sinister. So, um, it turns out they were roommates, and they were all living together, and they had... They were roommates. They were roommates. Uh, Not that kind of roommates, just like regular, like we're poor roommates. Um, They were practicing for manhood. (laughs) Flashback to last week. We were talking about practicing for girl ladyhood. Whatever. Anyway. Forget it. Yeah. Um, so ahead. anyway, they made a bet. They were they were playing cards and drinking one night, and they made a bet with each other. And they had wagered. Uh, I think Ed Waters uh, had wagered that he he bet him ten dollars that he could get himself featured in the local paper within a week. Um, and they said bet. And so to win the bet, he went to a local pet shop and he bought a monkey. And he gave it a lethal dose of chloroform. Oh, God. And he nared it, and he chopped its tail off. You can just buy a monkey back then? You could just go to the pet shop and buy a monkey. The monkey... Make was, America great again. The monkey was fifty dollars. He spent I want to be able to. We watched a TikTok of somebody with opening a package. Their pet monkey opened a package oh for them. Oh my god, it was I so want cute. one so bad, and Leah adorable. won't let me have it. But yeah, I'm not going to nair it. F- no, I'm not going to nair it. I'm not going to do anything bad to it. I'm just going to cuddle it and pet it and have it open my Amazon package. <laughs> What's the problem? <laughs> let me have a fucking monkey, Leah. No, you cannot have a monkey. Anyway. <sighs> Um, but yeah, so they, you know, murdered this monkey and made Ugh. it look like an alien. They took a blowtorch and they blowtorch scorch marks on the highway. And they, you I'm know, so did in fact screech their car down the highway because it wasn't a very, you know, used highway. So they just <laughs> like, like they, they, you know, faked all of the evidence of this yeah. story that they had concocted. This upsets um, me. So immediately they get arrested and charged with cruelty to an animal um, because obviously they murdered a fucking monkey for a joke. Yeah. Um, 
So, unfortunately, though, they got off on a technicality. Uh, so, the judge in the case was what? a man named James Manning. What could and- the technicality possibly be? <laughs> I'm getting there. Nair's not a brand name yet. You're fine. <laughs> No, the charge was uh, th- th- was cruelty to an animal, but they were tried in Cobb County where they were arrested. Yeah, but the monkey had been killed in Fulton County, and uh, okay. so they didn't have jurisdiction over that. Yeah. But uh, he did find everything that he could to throw at him just because he was mad about it, um, and because several cars had sort of stopped and like like it. it the sight of the thing had become like a a place where all the media would take pictures of it and shit like that and it was blocking up the highway yeah um they uh charged them with obstruction of a highway makes sense Um, yeah and anyway so they ended up pleading guilty and he was fined forty dollars um and the two friends were dismissed um so they weren't charged with anything oh come on um so he won the bet because he got in national papers not just the local one he he got won the bet um but he paid his 40 dollar fine and the monkey was 50 bucks so i mean he, he not a very good use of your money um no. if you ask me uh but yeah so basically it ended up that the waters man what left the town fucker. a few months later because he was tired of people calling him the monkey man <laughs> like imagine <laughs> the amount of work you have to go to to be like i'm gonna win this bet but first, I'm going to have to murder a monkey. What the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. Yeah. It's fucked up. It's not even worth that. No. Why would you do that? No. Um, well, yeah, I'm so upset. So anyway, it became known as the Great Monkey Hoax of 1953. Um, and in fact, you can still see the body of the monkey uh, if you want to. Um, it is now displayed at the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. They have a little mini museum in DeKalb County, Georgia. Yeah. Um, and you do have to make an appointment to go through the museum, but if you're interested, uh, it's available. Call and make uh, an appointment and you can see the, the monkey in a jar. Hashtag Great Monkey Hoax. Yeah, the Great Monkey Hoax. Yep. And most of this information was taken from uh, hoaxes.org, which is one of my favorite websites. <laughs> of course, it's that's about, a fucking website. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a the hoax museum uh you can just yeah. google hoax museum but their hoaxes are fucking hilarious and they you know uh you'll learn about some of the more interesting uh, escapades that have happened in our well all over the world really um it's really interesting and i recommend you looking at their website but uh you know this is one that i particularly thought was bizarre the links that someone would go to yeah just for that and the fact that you couldn't tell it was a monkey like i mean and to be fair i've seen the picture of it it looks weird but like you can tell that it is not an alien it is in fact just a monkey you can i don't want to see the picture because i don't want to see a nared burnt monkey yeah there there it would upset me all of the pictures are on if you go to that uh hoaxes.org um they do have pictures of all of this stuff um and pictures of it in the jar and all that stuff so if you're interested those pictures are available uh trigger warning it is a dead skinned monkey but uh, you know that's upsetting um but, you know, uh, I just, uh, I don't know where I was going with that, but... <laughs> you were going to end the story. <laughs> fucking weird, man. I mean, that's just, like... That's enough. I understand that it was the middle of rural Georgia in the 1950s and there wasn't a ton to do, but y'all... Yeah. You should have just kept honky-tonking. Yeah, y'all need better <laughs> excuses. We were bored. I needed to buy Nair... Well, first off, probably murder. Yeah. Nair. Murder than Nair. Cut. Ooh, let's talk about the morality of the order of operations you would go through in this thing. <laughs> With, what's the worst one to do first? Nair it, burn it, cut the tail off. Murder. Why? Who's burning it? It wasn't burnt? No. I thought it was burnt, too. No, the, to they, they took a blowtorch and they burnt the road as the scorch marks for the UFO takeoff. Okay. That's, that's right. The monkey um, was not burnt. Okay. They cut its tail So off. what's the most evil to start with? Obviously cutting the tail off. Okay. Cutting the tail off you think is evil first. I will say that uh, nairing is not bad, but <laughs> hold on. Like, it can burn a little bit because my hair has been chemical burned. Yeah, but and, losing uh, a limb is worse than being nared. I agree. But, uh, I mean, again, let's just figure this out. 
you know, let's just go through. But anyway, it happened uh, that he chloroformed it, then he neared it, then he cut the tail off. Yeah. Also, how, what do you... Ugh, I can't imagine the smell, because Nair no. doesn't smell good anyway. No, it's not bad, though, but and it doesn't Nair smell good. You're right. Monkey. You're right. It doesn't smell good. Ugh. Anyway, sorry. Uh, that that was the end of the story. That yep. was the, the Great Monkey Hoax of 1953. That was the Great Monkey Hoax, <laughs> Leah. You did great telling it. And, I mean, they, they did make newspapers, you know, nationwide, uh, just... And probably if that veterinarian had known what a monkey looked like, they wouldn't have made it any farther than their own. Yeah. See, like you were saying, you've just seen cows and horses. Yep. So dogs, (laughs) whatever. Um, But, you know. I just want to know what pet shop in the 1950s just had a cap- capuchin. That's what I'm say saying. Like, like, why can I not find that? That is so upsetting to me. I mean, because there's probably better laws in place. But, like, my grandmother tells this story all the time. She knows this story? <laughs> no, not this a story. A different story. Different okay. story. One you're a about story to get into. that she tells all the time is also about a monkey. But it was from when my dad was a little kid. Uh, they rented a, a house uh, near a dairy that they were working at uh, yeah. in Coleman. And my grandmother had my, my dad on her hip. Ugh. He was maybe two oh, or God. three years old. She was carrying him and they were going. I know and this story. And the, I love this story. Yeah. Go ahead was going and talking to the the landlord about something giving him rent or something they were friendly with him and the landlord had a spider monkey that he kept (laughs) on this little chain uh had a little collar and a chain around its neck he kept it you know out in the yard had a real long sort of little silver chain that it would run around the yard on yeah and apparently the spider monkey didn't like women any woman yeah. didn't fucking like him, yeah. would throw shit at him, would just be <laughs> generally obnoxious to any woman. She didn't like the spider monkey, and that spider monkey didn't like her. And she was trying to keep the spider monkey away from my dad. And yeah. anyway, the spider monkey gets off of its leash or chain or something. Anyway, ends up biting the shit out of my grandmother's leg and she like ends up like putting my daddy down and running around with this fucking monkey attacking her leg trying to beat this spider monkey off of her in the middle of rural goddamn alabama so wonderful in the in the probably the late 50s not much after this story happened what year was your dad born my dad was born in 57 yeah see my mom was born in either 50 i think it was 58 yeah so it would be around that time. Yeah, my dad was born in 57, so it was late 50s. Um, and like I said, she just, there's a fucking spider monkey in rural Alabama. Yeah. Just guy had it for no good hey. reason. But my grandmother still has a scar on her leg where she was attacked by a spider yeah. monkey in the 50s. And she's very upset about it. <laughs> she still hates that fucking hey, monkey. Hey, <laughs> if you think that's crazy, uh, my stepdad worked in a uh, furniture store in Montgomery for a very long time and he had a woman he always told me about it uh that would come in and he worked there for like 40 years so you know this could have been any time in that time period i don't i don't know if it was the 80s i think it was around the 80s 90s but this woman had a i don't remember the exact type but it was a pygmy monkey it was a tiny monkey that would come in the store with her in her breast pocket probably like a little marmoset or something if it's right. that small it was it was a tiny monkey it would just sit in like a breast pocket or something and she would bring it in and its favorite thing in the world to do was ride the record player. It would just ride it and it would go around in circles, right? <laughs> so that was its favorite thing. But uh, you could not have a coffee mug out around it because it was trained to use the bathroom in a coffee mug. Oh, no. Into cups. <laughs> so you better not have a coffee mug sitting on your desk when she comes in with, the, like, you need to put it up. Oh, here here comes old Alice. Let me put my mug up. You know, whatever her fucking name was. And uh, it, I ever since then, I was like, I got to get me one of those fucking pygmy monkeys. <laughs> I got to get one. <laughs> I've got to. So anyway, uh, I want a monkey so bad. I've wanted one forever, though. I swear, if a monkey shits in my coffee, I'm going to be so <laughs> mad. Leah, it might shit in the coffee. 
It might. I'm going to be so upset. I can't wait to have a monkey shit in your coffee. Monkeys freak me out because I don't like their hands. Um, so yeah, because the tiny hands, the you tiny hate tiny hands. hands. It's your I don't, favorite thing I don't in the world. do well with tiny hands. Um, I like watching them from afar because they're cute. Um, but yeah. I, yeah, the hands bother me. So I don't know that we could have a monkey. I would, I would lose my mind if I could have a picky monkey. <laughs> I would fucking. They're love it. like more work than a child. I, I don't think it's worth it, but whatever. Uh, if it if it opens Amazon packages, hashtag content. <laughs> we got to do something with YouTube, and we could if we had a monkey, Leah. We could have it opening all of our shit. Come on, we could do openings, loot box openings, stuff like that. Just but the monkey but does the, it. Yeah. Monkey unboxings. Monkey unboxings. Come I could get behind that. Come on. We should be doing it. And, you know, the only problem is monkeys are now outlandishly expensive. And you would have to pay all of the vet bills for a monkey. And it's just. And again, I don't know if our Hartzell vet can quite handle a monkey, you know. I mean, I'm sure Barry's seen a monkey a few times. Yeah. Barry might have seen a monkey. (laughs) But he is actually a cattle uh, veterinarian as well. So I think he's more along the lines of a. We take it in. He goes, is this a fucking alien? (laughs) What are you doing bringing an alien into my my practice? No, Barry. No, this is our monkey. Barry you know that. We, he's been here before. No, nah, this is an alien. <laughs> this is a fucking alien. I don't think he would cuss, but you know. No, he wouldn't. He's a very, uh, very chill, mellow, yeah. not that kind of guy. But <laughs> uh, the, my, my favorite thing about when uh, when we've gone to him before is we've talked a lot about uh probably not on the show but we've talked about our little dog his breath is awful and he's he's now five years old like it's not puppy breath his breath is he god just, yeah awful. his mouth smells like an ass right and i'm pretty sure that he eats the big dog shit but besides that <laughs> we took him into the vet and i was like barry look can you just like is there does he have halitosis or something like what can we do about his breath and he smelled it and he goes smells like dog breath to me and walked out of the room and i was like all right i guess we're not doing anything (laughs) all right dobby sorry your mouth sucks (laughs) well i mean he's not wrong it probably is just like no apparently all of dog's mouths smell like other dog shit (laughs) that's what i'm learning what are you gonna do anyway so well, Are you ready for a toast? Yeah, give me a toast. All right, everybody, hoist your solo cups high into the sky. Your We're going to toast. Mm-hmm. All right. Don't go sending creepy mail to the wife of your boss. <laughs> he may not take too kindly, and you'll find your life is lost. If you want... Sorry, let me try <laughs> this again. Were you, were you asking for a reaction? Because nope. there was a long pause. I was waiting, and you didn't <laughs> say anything, so I kept going. No, go ahead. Okay. If you want to get into the papers, just do something funky. It doesn't have to go so far as nearing a dead monkey. Oh. Drink. That poor monkey. That poor monkey. That's the upsetting part of this. Like, yeah. when I first read the thing, I was like, ah, oh, it's so funny. And then I realized that it wasn't like an already dead monkey. Like, they specifically got a monkey and made it dead. Yeah. That's the part that upset me. So, I apologize. They made it dead. If that triggered anybody animal wise yeah, it upset, upset me very badly as well i'm very upset about that <sighs> leah that's that bothers me a lot but yeah. you know i don't like anything bad to happen to animals so nope i'd much rather bad shit happen to people well if if it's gonna happen anyway you get what i'm saying i, do. Like, I don't want it to happen period but if it's gonna happen fuck you you have all of the uh you know the ability to not have bad stuff happen to you these are animals that's my argument, and um, excuse my burp, I stand by it. Yeah, if it happens to animals or children, it pisses me off yeah. pretty hardcore. Yeah, okay, let me clarify. When I say people, I don't mean young children. Yeah. <laughs> I mean adults who are like, who should know better, for the most part, with the dumb shit they do. Like, don't let somebody nare you and cut your tail off and throw you in the road, right? Right. Right. You have the choice in that situation, right? Probably not. It just depends. (laughs) If that happens to you, you probably didn't choose for that to happen, right? (laughs) I don't think so. I think you should probably stop talking before you dig yourself into a weird hole. Most likely, you didn't go, yeah, that sounds good. (laughs) 
If it gets you in the newspaper, God damn, I'll do it. Mitchell, you, know? you let someone near your entire head for a joke, so you don't have anywhere to talk. It wasn't it wasn't necessarily a joke. It was we wanted to quote unquote shave my head, but it was like, let's near it. That'd be cool. Neared it, kind of burned, bled a little bit. And now my hair doesn't grow right in one spot. Like I have a bald spot that's not in the center of my head. It's on the left side. And it's uh it's not good, y'all. It's a chemical burn. Yeah. <laughs> it's not good. I was nineteen when that happened. Actually it was my nineteenth birthday, so yeah. That's bad. Bad news all around. My bald husband. <laughs> down out down. <laughs> well, all right, I guess I guess we're done then. Yeah, that's everything. Well, if you don't have anything else fun to do. We're good? I'm out. Okay, y'all. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Join the community chat on Facebook. Send us an email to southernspiritspodcast at gmail.com. Join the Patreon, patreon.com slash southernspiritspodcast. Send us a postcard or anything else fun to P.O. Box 1743 in Hartsell, Alabama, 35640. What did I forget, Leah? I definitely forgot something. I didn't? I don't know. (laughs) Okay, we're good then. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We really appreciate you, and we will see you next time. Bye, y'all.